Hi, this is Larry Zorro. What a good day today it is in Christ. Every day is a good day. It's a day of resurrection possibilities. That's right. God could come down at any time and he could say, come up hither. Anyway, we're going to talk about today how to be rich. Oh yeah, don't you want to become rich? What is, how do you really become successful or your dreams? I want to fulfill my dreams or I, I'm working hard toward those dreams. I'm working hard. What are you working hard for what? I'm working hard. I want to be rich. I want to be, I want to have wealth. Well, I'm going to tell you today how to become rich. Now, I'm a Christian, so it's going to be a Christian perspective, but I'll let you know the worldly perspective too so you can understand the christian perspective that much more better now here it is you fulfill a need and you will become rich and that's simple just fulfill a need just think what people want and fulfill that need and you will become rich it's really a simple principle when you go shopping you're looking for things you need to buy you buy mainly for what? For pleasure or necessity. Sometimes you even buy for others. So the basic principle of obtaining wealth is to sell that which people need and you just might become rich. Of course, there's other factors to interplay with that, how much starting capital you have. But that's a basic principle. If you can find that thing that people need, you will become rich. Now I've got a question. As a Christian, I've got a question. If you can gain the whole world, or at least uh, the world that you live in, it, will, will it really profit you? And you know, uh, Is it really a, a thing and a desire you should always constantly set your mind to, focus on? You know, life is just temporal and finite, in this physical world and does temporal fame and wealth really what you want is your model I don't care about the future I just want it now I want it here and now I don't care about eternity just give it to me here and now but if you want something that's going to last last throughout eternity in Luke 12 33 we see that he says sell that you have Give alms, provide yourself bags which wax not old, a treasure in heaven that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. He told you a lot right there. How to become rich. He didn't say treasure mentality is really a dumb thing to have. You should just be happy to be poor throughout eternity. Just be poor. Blessed are the poor. Now he says, hey, I'll tell you how to get treasure that doesn't fail. Nobody can steal it from you, and, and it won't even corrupt. Wouldn't that be great? Now, he was talking about not just the, like selling your advice or your words. He was telling you to sell what you have, and he's talking about your physical possessions, the things that you hold so dearly, you've striven for, and you've heaped up in piles in your storage houses of treasure. Now, Jesus taught that in order to get eternally rich, you must give your possessions away. I know some of you cannot do it. You trust too much in the things you have acquired, and it's your stuff. You have earned it, and you'll be damned if you're going to give it all away. God doesn't force giving on anyone. It must be voluntary. God has placed it in your power for earthly rewards or heavenly treasure. He's placed it in your power. You do what you will. I can't tell you to do it. I'm just telling you what Jesus said, how to get heavenly treasure, the kind that will last throughout eternity. Houses and lands in heaven? Wow. All right, well, good luck on, or should I say, rich blessings on your journey of decision. But think of all the stuff you will not need storage for and all that wasted expense and constant continual upkeep of your possessions. In Matthew, verse 6, 19, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth, 
where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. But the thing is, trust God in the Word of God and what He speaks. Try to do as much as you can of what God tells you to do and what Jesus tells you to do. But we got to look at that God's ways are not your ways. This is not the time to obtain earthly wealth. Look at this verse in Mark 10. It's got a special, special thing in it you may never have seen. It starts out in verse 29, And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that had left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive an hundredfold. Now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions in the world to come, eternal life. Okay, look at this verse. But he shall receive a hundredfold now. Now is the time to receive a hundredfold in this time. Now, not someday. Can you imagine the angels are busy, busily at work storing up our treasure for us where moth and rust does not corrupt? That's right. Jesus said, your riches in heaven will and they can start today in this time. Like I said, not on the earth, but waiting for you in heaven. Glory to God, I might be poor, but I think I've already acquired some treasure waiting for me in heaven because I've learned the principle of giving. Now it's up to you. Like I said, God can't force you to do anything you do not want to do. I wonder if you'll shout in joy that you are now rich in heaven or will you walk away like the rich man did? In Matthew 19, 22, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Why, Jesus said, sell what you have and give and help the poor. But the rich man, he walked away sad. Is that how you are today? You're going to walk away sad? You know, it, it could start with just a little start. Sell something today that you don't need and then help and do good with it. Well, this is Larry Zorro. I hope you have a blessed day. If you don't know Jesus Christ, I hope you place your trust in him. The one, the God-man, equally God, equally man of the triune Godhead. The one that died for you on the cross for your sins. The one who was raised again. He was raised by the power of God. That's right. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They raised Jesus from the dead. In a way, you could say that Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will raise it up. God is not three gods, it's one God. But anyway, put your trust in Jesus. Say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Forgive my sins. Take me to heaven when I die or when I'm raptured up. I just praise your holy name and thank you for the victory that's in Jesus Christ. I pray it in his holy name. Amen. See you later. Bye.